It's Sparrow from spiteandsparrow.com where I blog about sewing, witchery, and other random nonsense. You can also visit my Patreon page, which is patreon.com backslash sparrow spite for shuttle tatting lessons and patterns and all kinds of other goodies. So for this video, I wanted to show you guys how I open a closed ring. This is one of the things that I hear the most complaint about when people are first starting out with tatting or who think tatting is very difficult is that you can't undo your work. You can't open a ring. So it's very difficult if you need to go back where you've made a mistake and undo things because it's impossible to open a ring. Well, it's not impossible, but it is somewhat difficult. Uh, but I have several little tricks that I will use. Of note, I am using a size 3 thread for this, uh, so you can hopefully see everything that I'm doing. This is easier with larger threads. It is still possible with smaller threads, but you'll need a little bit more patience when you're playing around with it. Um, I have tatted this ring with my normal tension and closed it very tightly, which is what I typically do. I usually tat with a very tight tension. So this is not uh, closed loosely. There's no magic tricks here to make it seem easier than what it is. And we'll see how this goes. This doesn't always work for me. Um, sometimes it takes a little more effort than others. But uh, generally I'm able to open pretty much any ring that I have closed. So. Uh, for this, I am using my clover shuttle with the pick on the end. I like to have the pick specifically for unpicking stitches and for opening rings. I find it very handy. If you uh, don't have a pick like this, you can use the hook that's on the end of some of your other shuttles. Or if you're very careful, sometimes you can use the end of a scissor point. Um, not open, but with the scissors closed or um, any, pretty much anything else that can get underneath and in between stitches. So for this, I'm just gonna use the pick on my shuttle. And to start, you wanna find your very last stitch, and this is easy to see because I'm using this variegated thread. So my very last stitch here is this green one right here, and I'm gonna find the cap on my last stitch and work that pick underneath there until I can loosen that up a little bit. And essentially what I'm going to do, now that I have loosened it up, I have my shuttle thread is the white here that you can see. And I've made this little loop here and I can pull that and get that loosened up. And if I get it going the right direction, you can see that I can also loosen my next stitch by again going underneath the cap of the stitch and just working that in there. until I have loosened enough thread to where I can fit my shuttle through that loop and undo that stitch. Now you can see I undid that stitch, but now it's still wrapped around, but that's okay. I'm just gonna leave it like that until I can loosen this next one up enough to again find where my shuttle passes through. So if I pull this to the back, and it's just a process, just follow your thread. So now I've got this loosened up. So basically what I've done is undo that very last stitch. And I've got all this loose thread here, but I'm just gonna leave that alone. 
and I'm gonna go to my very last pico, whatever is closest. This is easier if you have a pico that's only a couple of stitches away from the end of your ring. If you were gonna try to use this one up here, it would still work, it would just be a little more difficult. Um, but essentially the idea is that in order to open this ring, we wanna get this thread here at our start stitch pulled through to reopen. But trying to make that thread go all the way around this curve can be very difficult. So to make it a little easier, I'm gonna slide that pico apart and I'm gonna start pulling thread up through the base of that pico. And as you do this, you might notice that you get a little bit of a knot here at the end. So just work it back loose. until you can continue pulling your shuttle thread up. And again, if you get a knot, just loosen it back up. So now I've got where my pico is, I've got all this thread here. And now when I pull the beginning of my ring, here from my very first stitch at the base of that, all that thread will now come where I want it to be. And now I've got enough space that I can actually work here and get that loosened up again. Like I said, as you pull on it, it will probably tighten into a knot, but now that I have enough space to fit my shuttle through here, I can very easily undo those stitches and work through that. And there you have it. Now my ring is open. And I can go back. I can undo the entire ring and rework it completely. I can undo uh, just back to whatever mistake I made. Say if I needed to join up here or over here, I have my ring back open and I can complete uh, whatever I needed to finish and then just reclose it again and away you go. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, visit my Patreon page for more quick tips and tricks and for some really nifty little patterns and things. So thanks for watching. Bye.